Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm joined by Joy Singh. Joyce, what a week we've hit. We're at peak awards uh, announcements, it feels like. Well, it started. It started on the last day of November. Or I mean, you could count the Gotham's last week, too. The Gotham set it off. We had the New York Film Critics Circle on Thursday. We have uh, the Spirit Award nominations. I think the National Board of Review is today. Is that right? It's today, Wednesday, as we're recording. It's the morning right now. And they're usually announced around like 1, 1 1.30 Eastern. So so, so we'll probably be done with it by then. So we'll talk about that maybe in our comments. We don't know how long this is going to be. Who knows? And then uh, the Golden Globes are announced Monday, Joyce. They're back on CBS and Paramount Plus. Can't wait. Um, After football, a doubleheader. It's It'll start at like 8.23 p.m. So I'm psyched. We're going to do uh, film and TV predictions in one episode. Yeah, so just jump to whatever you want. We'll have this time stamps. You don't need to listen to the whole thing. Yeah. I would listen to the whole thing because I'm a completist. And we're pretty good. I think it's good listen. Do you re-listen to Sometimes. all of our? Sometimes. I know because you you do edit them. So. And got a quality control. Yeah. Got to mm-hmm. see what I said. We're gonna start with film, Joyce. Uh, we were talking before we start recording. Not as hard this year because there's six nominees so just everywhere. So any tough decisions? You're really not making a tough decision, unless you want to be a lunatic like me and just put random stuff in, which is what I did. I hate the extra slot because you know how I feel about this. It should just be five everywhere. It, it's um, silly. And it's it's helpful in film, but it's a pain in the ass for TV. Yeah, but it shouldn't be helpful. I don't think this should be helpful at all. There should be no help. We should be able to have to make no. tough choices. Yeah, that's Life why is about tough choices. Yeah, yeah, life is about tough choices. But now we don't have tough choices. So I'm just throwing Hail Mary bombs all over the place in this. So film drama, Joyce, here we go. I've got Oppenheimer. Kills the Flower Moon, Maestro, Past Lives, Anatomy of Fall, and the movie Origin. I have Oppie, Flower Moon, Maestro, Past Lives, Anatomy of a Fall, and The Zone of Interest. Those are the top six in the odds. I don't like being with the consensus, but... So I had Saltburn here for a long time. Feels really globesy to me. But I think it's maybe old globes. But we don't really know like how much older or newer the expanded membership is. <laughs> the one thing I'll say about Origin, which I have a screener for, Joy, I still haven't watched it yet, but I will watch it soon. Have you seen that one yet? I have not watched that one yet either, but uh, I too also have it. So, so we'll be watching it. Uh, Everybody I've talked to is said it's, it plays really well in the room. And I feel like it's just the kind of movie that the Globes would, I could see it having like one of the last ones that people watched and just like a recency bias to the top because of the emotional impact of the film. That would be my take. Yeah, people cry, but I think it, it sounds like very like SAG appealing. And also Maybe. what you're saying about recency bias, last one scene, I think that would apply to MBR <laughs> more too, because they love, Going with stuff that they just watched. True. I, I think Origin's going to have a good week. Because I could see it popping in a VR too. And we'll see here in a minute when the actor and actress categories might have this movie represented again. Uh, seemingly, the, if this was just five, it would be very easy. Because I think the top five yes. are would automatically get in. And Zone of Interest is in six. Saltburn is in seventh. Napoleon is in eighth in the odds. Then all of the strangers, Iron Claw, and Origin. So, I mean, Napoleon hit overseas. Yeah not surprising so um i did have um all of us strangers Mm -hmm. um for a bit and then i swapped it for zone i'm curious about zone of interest i still don't feel like it hasn't really shown up anywhere yet in a lot of like no it's funny because like all like some regionals critics groups have announced winners too and so far anatomy of fall is slaying every foreign language, non-English international film award. Yes. It's winning the award it can't win at the Oscars. Yes. And I feel like that is making the perception of Zone of Interest not winning anything because it won't win against Anatomy of Fall, which it didn't win against Anatomy of Fall, it can. And yet somehow it could still win at the Oscars seemingly in international feature where it will be nominated Anatomy of Fall will not. Just a hilarious uh, circumstance, I feel I like. also wonder at this point how many voters, like Oscar voters, are aware that anatomy of a fall is not france's submission not i would guess not many 
And I think they're going to be like, surprised. Maybe they might see these headlines and, you know, attendees shows that Anatomy of Fall is, is you know, being nominated and winning awards at. And then, um, you know, all of a sudden it's like, oh, like you can't nominate this or it's not it's not an Oscar nominee. It's not a snub because France just didn't pick it, you know. And so. it's funny because Taste of Things, another movie, still haven't seen. Uh, food. Food. They love uh, every event, every screening I get for that feels like it's got tied to an event where I see David Ehrlich posting like Instagram photos of five star meals. Yeah. That, that's how you wine and dine people. Literally in this case. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Film drama actress choice. We'll just speed through these. Not much else to say. I, we don't have to do the winners, but I have Oppenheimer in first. I think you did as well. So there we go. Okay. Guess we'll, we'll do the winners next week when we recap when we recap the, the nominations, maybe, or at least first steps. Film drama actors. I have Lily Gladstone, first place, but Kills the Flower Moon. Let's go. Uh, Annette Bening, Carrie Mulligan, Sandra Huller, Greta Lee, and then Anjanae Ellis Taylor for Origin. You're just all in on Origin. Yes. I have Carrie, Lily, Sandra, Annette, Kaylee Spaney for Priscilla, and Greta. I had Kaylee Spaney. She's six in the odds. Anjanae Ellis Taylor is seventh. I was just, just, I'm just a little like, Priscilla feels like it came and went. Do you get that vibe? It's just like not being it's embraced. It's weird because it, it did, or like it's still doing really well at the box office. I think it's and, already hit 20 million, right? But it's not like showing up anywhere like no. it got blanked at spirits you know um and i don't know and, but it's like it does she does feel like a very globesy nominee and we talked about this a mm -hmm. while back and how like all the top 10 in the oscars best actress race could all be nominated at the globes because may december won comedy yes so i love the movie it's like one of my fav faves of the year when we do if i do it we do it if we're asked Somebody wants to email us and ask our favorite movies a year. It definitely will do that I later. I mean, you could just share it. You don't need. I to guess I will share it, but uh, it's, it would be in my top ten. It's a great movie, but I just like you're saying, like it. Ha it's done really well. I think it's got to be. I didn't look at this, but I'm sure it's got to be Sophia Coppola's most successful box office movie since Lost in Translation at this point, mm -hmm. or close to it. Uh, was greatly reviewed. I feel like, and then now I see, see people talking about, it and they're like, meh, and not like nobody but seems to she care. Could, she could also just kind of, you know, like last year they nominated Olivia Coleman for yeah. your fave Empire of Light. Right. When is that coming out? Um, a year ago this week. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll fire up the time machine and check it out. Mm -hmm. Uh, drama actor Joyce. I have Bradley Cooper, Kelly Murphy, Leonardo DiCaprio, Coleman Domingo. Barry Keoghan and Andrew Scott. This is top six in the odds and the top six in my picks. You talked to Barry, so you got to keep him. He's the goat. Love Barry. Great interview. Watch it on YouTube. Be one of the uh, hundreds who have watched it. I, I did have Barry for a while, but now I have Killian, Bradley, Leo, Coleman, Andrew, and Zach Efron for the yes. Iron Claw. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Would be the most Globesy thing in the past. I feel like we'll see if this Globes is just like the old Globes, but I feel like that's a great pick. No, I feel like it'll it'll just be a mix. It's just, you know, it's it's not like a complete complete change really. And they just they just added more people. I mean, like last year's <clears throat> nominees, like it it wasn't. I I wouldn't say like it was like as far out as like you know old Globes like pre-scandal yeah, globes yeah yeah but there were still some nominees that just it felt globesy now you know like like brad yeah. pitt in babylon right. i i felt like kyogen would be globesy here yeah like the brad and then pitt. well i'm i mostly like got rid of him because mm -hmm. i just wanted someone different <laughs> right that's fair uh, this is a could be there's a room for a lot of fun here because like outside of the top four which are four of the most popular oscar contenders as well Five and six could really be anybody. I mean, like we said, Andrew Scott and, and Keoghan are fifth and six in the odds. You have Efron. There's Joaquin Phoenix for Napoleon. Adam Driver for Ferrari, which I think is not impossible here. Uh, Tail you for Past Lives. Depends on how they like the film. Franz Rogowski for Passages, who's just exploding. New York winner. And a Spirit nominee. And probably in L.A. at least. I bet you he'll place at L.A. when they do that this weekend. Well, they, they have double winners because, you know, yeah. gender neutral. Yes. So, uh, 
yeah, just a lot of options here that I would not be surprised if there is some a couple of surprises, but Zac Efron would be great. We we haven't talked about that movie that much, but he's very good. Well, it comes out in two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually they'll lift the review embargo and people will get to see it, I guess, or read the reviews. Yeah. I mean, like last year they here in this category, they also did um Jeremy Pope for the inspection. Yes. And Hugh Jackman for the sun. Remember the sun? Mm, I feel like I don't. Is that a mm-hmm. movie? Yeah, it was the same movie as Empire of Light. Oh, okay. Film comedy musical, Joyce, next. Uh, I have American Fiction, Barbie, The Holdovers, Poor Things, The Color Purple, and May December. I have the same. It it pained me to remove air, but I did. Same, but like once May December won comedy, I was like, I, I gotta do it. Other one I really wanted to put in here is Wonka. Which I love. And then I thought about it after I saw it because I really enjoyed it. Uh, But then I was like, I'm going to keep May to December. (laughs) Wonka is so good. It's It's definitely another movie that I would have in my top 10. It would be a great Oscar nominee in multiple categories. But I don't know if it's going to be here uh, in this category. I think May to December. I mean, I think it can show up, but I just, I didn't know what what else to drop here. Like, I'm not going to drop. Like, really, like, I think, I feel like the only thing I could drop is May, December. <laughs> yes. So and I feel like May, December has got so much buzz since it came out on Netflix. This is, it's being, I mean, hailed as one of the best Netflix movies ever, I would say. Um, It's, I, it's definitely gotten a better, I feel like the, the response at Cannes was kind of, it was like, okay, you know, it was not like super hyped. So I think I think that was actually good for it. Like it didn't get yes. bad reviews, but no. it was just kind of like, you know, like it's a solid movie. And now that like or you know it's out released to the public, that there's there's a large range of reactions to it, but mostly positive. And um, I've seen a lot of like, you know, I I thought this was this wasn't gonna be as good because of like the can reaction, but this is actually great. And it's like yes. Do you think we'll talk? We don't need to talk about this now, I guess, but I'm almost, I can't figure out how to put it in for best picture, but I think it's not unlikely that it could get in for best picture at the Oscars. Um, I don't know. It's like, I, I, I think it, it would need to, um, I don't know if it will be something that would show up without a lot of precursor support. I think it would need to build that right in the run up, right? Too. We, it has so. been gotten so far, I mean, very limited, uh, data points but it has gotten a lot of support so far it got um five spirit nominations yesterday mm-hmm. uh none for julianne moore sadly which i still I, I saw people press that julianne and paul giamatti missed and i was like i don't think it matters for the oscars to me no but. not at all because she could still hit globes yeah. and tag um and i think that that supporting actress category is still flexible for her to get in at the oscars like it really does not matter it's spirits it's like not no the, like, and same with Paul. People voting, and also like they have you know gender neutral categories mm-hmm. now. Like she probably would have made it if they were still gendered. Um, I do sidebar. I've wanted to ask this since we saw it at New York Film Festival. Um, how do you think the awards campaign for Elizabeth's movie would go? Wow, great question. Uh, I this is one of my uh, just to. to if you guess, haven't seen a movie, you could skip this part. If you to care yes, about and that. Uh, I don't think is Elizabeth a good actor. Okay, so here's here's my like, I I love the movie because it's just like a giant troll yes. on Elizabeth Berry and just like you know, um, method actors and like actor brain. Like she has total actor brain rot, mm-hmm. you know, um. So I think she has, like she, they mentioned that she uh, went to Juilliard. So she's trained and I I think she is talented and she can be good, but she hasn't had like the right material or she's just been picking bad projects. Like she has potential, you know, and then she's insecure about that because she doesn't like being on Nora's arc. Yes. You know, and then she thinks like this is going to be like her big, uh, you know, level up to prestige film, like her Oscar play. Mm-hmm. 
so that's why she's taking this so seriously like she like I, it feels like this film is like her first opportunity to yes. be a ser- the serious actress that she wanted to be because she mentions that you know she wanted to do broadway you know and so she's done some theater you get the sense like she never made it to broadway yes yeah definitely so i think like she views this as as, as that stepping stone and then, you know, she gets completely destabilized by Gracie at the end with that reveal at graduation that she's been fucking with her, you know, and that she can't like find, like she doesn't have Gracie's truth on lock. So, the best. and then like just like completely fucks with her mm-hmm. performance at the end, which is great. She needs to find the truth, Joyce. Yes. Gotta find the truth. It's getting more real. It's getting more real. Uh, I think she'd be a Critics' Choice nominee, but not anywhere else. Okay. I wish we knew the title of the movie, um, the movie looks like crap. It looks like a lifetime movie. Yes, I mean that's definitely it. it look, yeah, it looks exactly like the the first version of the Gracie story that she mm-hmm. watches. On, mm-hmm. um, but I think that's also kind of like like her acting choices because she doesn't know what to do now because you know she she has to start from scratch basically. Um, so I feel like so it's clearly like like an indie project, right? Yeah. So Who's the, do you I think, think Todd is the director in the in the indie project? No, the the <laughs> director she was on the phone with. He yes. sounded um like he had an accent. He did. So he sounded international, and then he mentioned like his wife shooting a show in Rome or something. Is is I I've seen it twice, so forgive me, but. Is the I've director the <laughs> is the director the guy who's just like there's a long pause and he's like you need to come home. Yeah, when she's like, the kids are not sexy enough. Yeah. That is really one of the funniest lines. I was like, th- this is why this movie is, I actually think this could get in for best picture. I think Natalie can get in for best actress at the Oscars too. It's so funny. And like that, I was like, this is such a great movie from top to bottom in terms of casting. Cause that's a person just literally on a phone. And he has one of the funniest lines and line readings of the entire year in any movie. And then just like the cut to the airport of Joe being up. That was good. That was so good. Uh, But so I, okay, so it's an indie movie. movie. So I feel like it'll get, like maybe, maybe it'll be like, like a Sundance premiere or something. Yeah. I feel like it'll be like launched at a festival somewhere. I think Sundance sounds great. No distribution, Sundance movie. Yeah. And then who's going to pick it up? Elizabeth in the snow boots. Elizabeth Barry gets picked up by like Rialto or something. And then, and then it just fizzles out. This had Oscar buzz. Yeah. I think that's fair. Uh, Yeah. So anyway, I'm glad glad we laid this out. And I think it could, I think it's going to do really well. I just think people are going to love it. I think they could all get in at SAG and it could actually get ensemble at SAG. Well, it's also Netflix. So I really think it's going to do really well. I think it's going to do really well this whole year. Uh, and it's an organic hit. Like, I think that is like part of the thing with Netflix is that we've seen in the last few years when they have like an organic success rather than one that's like, you're absolutely going to love this movie. You have to love this movie. Uh, it works better. Well, we also talked about this, like after we saw it, you know, um, and how it's, you know, incredibly accessible because yes. it's, you know, based on Mary Kay Letourneau, mm-hmm. um, who, you know, a lot of people based on this weekend uh had never heard of before no. the kids the youths and um i saw some comments being like i didn't know what may december meant i didn't know that was a term for you know an age gap romance the, the learning learning is not a, yeah learning yeah, is not bad. a priority joyce uh, we've, yeah, let, yeah. we've le- left learning behind yeah as a culture. no one reads yeah um uh, and then you know i like i think yeah so it's like it's it's basically what the movie's indicting us on like you know yes. just kind of being complicit in the sensationalism yeah. of this stuff so now people are seeking out more information about mary Kay mm-hmm. and everything and you know it's like like i said this before it's like like does netflix have a mary Kay doc because like that would just boost up numbers you know they they gotta if they don't they should license they, they need to pump one out you know I, my mom watched it she was uh she was like i don't she was like i didn't understand it and then she just rattled off everything that happened in the end i was like you understand it perfectly what are you talking about she's like oh okay She's like, good. I was like, this yeah, is probably the first time reactions... movie she's ever seen. I yeah, I've, I've, I've seen some reactions being like the the film went nowhere because I feel like maybe some people thought Gracie would get her comeuppance or something, you know, because yes. yeah. and and I'm just like, it, it just confirms that she's a fucking sociopath. 
Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like it's the it's the thing you already believe about her, you know. And it's great. It's yeah, it's really like great. you don't really need anything else it's in so it, good. like for her to be, you know, punished or whatever. But um, yeah. So great film. Uh, film drama actress, a uh, film comedy musical actress. Excuse me. Speaking of May December, I have Emma Stone, Margot Robbie, Natalie Portman, Fantasia, and then. Tough filling out the six, Joyce. I have Jennifer Lawrence for No Hard Feelings, one of the great comedies of the year, and Evie Hewson for Floor and Son on the idea that Apple is probably just promoting the hell out of it for Golub's orders. Um, I have Emma, Margot, Fantasia, Natalie, J Law, and Julia Louis Dreyfus for You Hurt My Feelings. That's the top six in the odds. Yeah. Would make sense. Uh, I just feel like no one's talking about You Hurt My Feelings. A very fine movie that I watched on a plane. But like, I like, is anyone really talking about Flora and Son? I think they are. Abby. I want Abby to get in, actually. But I don't think she's going to get in. Abby Ryder Forsen for Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret. A great. I did think about Halle Bailey for The Little Mermaid. I thought of that, too, actually. It would not surprise me at all. Um, But who knows? The other two people I wanted to mention here are my bottoms pals, uh, Rachel Senat and Io Debris. I can't believe you didn't do either of them. How do you pick perfection? How do you pick between perfection? I mean, they could double up on Io. If they were dom- nominating comedy teams, this would be great. One works so well with the other. My personal preference is Rachel, but I think Io is also awesome in it. She has the Michael Sarah part, and it's great. Um, next, film comedy musical actor. Joyce, I got Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction, Paul Giamatti for The Holdovers, Matthew Damon for the movie Air. You mean Matthew Page Damon? Timothy Chalamet for Wonka. Nick Cage for Dream Scenario before he makes his own Breaking Bad uh, show. He'd never seen TV before Breaking Bad. He was like- 10 years after it ended. Talked to Mike Ryan for Up Rocks and he was like, have you heard of TV? And there's this show Breaking Bad and it's great. And I'm going to quit acting on movies to do TV. It's amazing. And then I have Jamie Foxx for The Burial. Uh, I don't know. I got nothing else to say there. This is a tough category to fill out with six. There you go. Uh, I have Jeffrey Paul, Matthew Page Damon, Timothy Chalamet, Nick, and Gael Garcia Bernal for Cassandra. I don't know. He's I've had this, six. this six for forever and I just kept it. It's He's the sixth in the odds. Uh, he's out there promoting his movie. I think he's very good in the movie. I don't think the movie is great, but he is good. And I think it's weird that it's in comedy. I guess it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is the people we left out. This is, this is the rest of this category. Michael Fassbender for next goal wins. That's that's, that came out. That's in the running for this year's empire of light. Paul, Paul Dano for dumb money. Still waiting to see that one. Missed it. Joaquin Phoenix for Bo is Afraid, one of the most divisive movies of the year. Ray Romano for Somewhere in Queens, which I feel like I would love, but I haven't seen it yet. Ben Platt for Theater Camp. I mean, there's not a lot here. So, I don't know. I have Jeffrey Wright winning. We'll talk about this later, I guess, when we do the winners. But um, Next. Yeah, I have them in first, too. So. Film Supporting Actress. This is a nutty could go in a thousand different ways category i don't really know what to say or do uh this is what i came up with devon joy randolph daniel brooks emily blunt jody foster julianne moore and erica alexander for american fiction because you talked to her just yesterday love talking to her but i think that's i think if american fiction so like what happened with the spirit awards is that all the actors were pushed along with the movie and they, I feel they got like three acting nominations. They if got you love the movie, Jeffrey, Erica and Sterling K. Brown. Right. And I'm like, if you love the movie and I feel like people have loved the movie, I don't understand why they wouldn't coattail in someone like Eric Alexander, especially at the Globes where there's six nominees, especially in this category where there's like, just, it's very fluid, like we've said. So I have her in, but I left out people I wanted to put in too, which are like, Rosamund Pike feels like very Globesy. America Ferrera, uh, Ferrara for Barbie feels Globesy. Viola, Rachel McAdams. But anyway, there you go. That's my six. What do you got? Um, I have Danielle, Davine, Emily, Jody, Julianne, and Nelby Cruz for Ferrari. 
uh, incredible performance uh, in a movie I liked a lot more than I thought I would. Watched it last week, I think, or a couple weeks ago. It's, it's solid. I wanted to get in all the, like, the cinematography and the editing and the sound are probably the best, if not, or some of the best of the year that are in Oppenheimer. It's just so good. It's so well made. And I think, she's, I don't know if I did put it in sound. Maybe I did. I don't know. Uh, and she's amazing. She's definitely the best part. Though I thought Driver was pretty good as the lead. I, the problem, uh, an issue I had with the movie is just like, I know it's about like the fa- folly of masculinity or like thinking you're like important, but I was just like, I wish it, it felt like it wasn't necessarily about anything to me, but it's like really great to watch because the racing is so good. <laughs> the racings are incredible and she's awesome, Penelope Cruz. So she gets in. I'm very excited, but I don't know. Yeah, um, I don't know how the film is going to play overall, not just at the Globes, but um, yeah, she's great in it. And I mean, I put her in after it, it premiered um, at Venice, so I got her at 100 to 1. So Way I'm just going to gonna keep her. <laughs> nice. That's worth it. Uh, supporting actor, another exciting category. I have Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. Gosling for Barbie, Mark Ruffalo for Poor Things, Willem Dafoe for Poor Things, Charles Melton for May December, and Sterling K. Brown for American Fiction. Because you also just talked to him. Lovely man. Um, I have RDJ, Mark, Ryan, Bob, Willem, and Charles. So this has been my six since they added the sixth slot. So that's the top six in the odds too. I didn't put Bob back in because the Globes have not, he got the Cecil the Mild Award in I think 2011. And then I think he had one nominee maybe for the Madoff movie. I think he had a nomination, but other than that, he has not shown up here. Not that he's had a lot of opportunities to, but like not even the Irishman year. So I'm just like, I don't know that they are. And again, it's a different group and everything and blah, blah, blah. And he's great in the movie. So like it would make sense if he showed up here, but I'm like they're not like eight, they're not like automatically giving him nominations anymore. Whereas I think in the first half of his career they were. So apples to orange. No, he doesn't there. like have a great like Globes history, and you know he also railed against him like years ago. But I mean I don't think they like really care about that anymore. Um, it's I. Like, I, I don't think, like, the Irishman situation is comparable because I just think that performance is just so much more muted, you know, and that was also a tough year in lead actor that year. This, I thought about instead of having Willem um, putting in Dominic Sessa, but I didn't do it. So. I, I do wonder if we're women talking the poor things, guys, that we're just expecting. It's a, It's not as, like... It's a much, so far, it seems, it doesn't come out. It comes out this week, I guess, in limited release. Yeah. The reviews have still been great, even though there's been some loud pushback from small people online, like a, a small but loud dissent. Well, it's gonna, you know, it's not a great film for the the crowd that does not like sex scenes, so, or nudity. I just wonder if, like, will one of these guys drop out? I can't really decide who would. I could see that happening, though. And then maybe Bob gets in. Like, But I don't know. I think both of them would get in. Because like you said, like Ruffalo has like a quote-unquote surprise factor for some people. And then Defoe is like beloved and is like actually the emotional heart of the movie, maybe. To quote Martin Scorsese about Lily Gladstone and Flower Moon. The heart and soul of the film. Um, so. he Yeah, like he's like the emotional touchstone of the movie when everyone else is like kind of wacky. I mean, mm-hmm. Rami Yusuf kind of too, but he's like secondary. He's great. Um, yeah, and I... my my friend watched it recently, Poor Things, and like she was surprised by how much she liked Willem too. So she she doesn't like follow Oscars or anything Yeah, at all. But yeah, people like, like I, I think people yeah. like him, yeah. Uh, best or film director, Joyce. I've got Nolan, Scorsese, Greta Gerwig, Yorgos, Bradley Cooper, and Alexander Payne. Top six in the odds, top six in my picks. Um, I have Nolan, Marty, Yorgos, Greta, Payne, and Justine Trey for Anatomy of a Fall. I dropped Bradley because I didn't want to have the consensus. Uh, I feel like Bradley's going to get in here and it's going to get his hopes up and the film Twitter's hopes up for him to get in at the Oscars, but I'm still not sure that's going to happen. I don't like, okay. So, I mean, Maestro is not, it's out in limited release, not on Netflix yet. 
um I've like from people I know who've seen it like my friends and uh like I, it's just like I know so many people who are just they like it and but like no one loves it no one yes. hates it either you know which is what we kind of said when we saw it yeah it's like there's so many great things about it I think mm-hmm. all the the individual departments and perform everything alone is like incredible and then the movie is good <laughs> you know what I mean it's yeah like, like I've had no one tell me like this is you know their favorite of the year or like right. top three or something right you know I still think he'll get in here because he's famous but it's we'll a very globesy pick um but I just didn't do it so uh I had him for a while I got Barbie American Fiction Holdovers Poor Things Oppenheimer and Anatomy of a Fall um I have oh let me that's director still uh, Poor Things, Oppie, Barbie, Holdovers, American Fiction, and Anatomy of a Fall. They're the same. We yes. neither one of us have Flower Moon. I I did have it actually. So when it when it was five, or when we thought it was five, I did not have Flower Moon. And then when they added the sixth slot, I added Flower Moon. But now I'm just like all in on Anatomy of a Fall. So. <laughs> One thing I noticed just from the Gotham Awards when I went and just in general from all the things we've seen so far is that like Anatomy of Fall is very much like we have we expected. It's a consensus movie and the script is like definitely an easy thing to nominate, certainly. And it's like very because of the way it's written and it's like a mystery and people like that about it, I'm sure. And I'm like right now in the odds here, it's first, second, two, three, four, six, seven. It's in eighth place. I'm just like, that's like way too low. Like it's behind... I mean, American Fiction's in six, which I also think is too low. I think American Fiction could win this, frankly. But I just feel like people maybe haven't updated a lot. So I feel like, I think that's the clear six to me and Flower Moon would be seventh or maybe, or Past Lives would be seventh, but. Yeah, I, I thought about Past Lives too. It's it's tough because they only have one screenplay category. Right. Like all of the, if they hadn't split categories, all of these would All of these in. would get in, probably. And Flower Moon. So, so last year, the Globes dated Banshees, which won. Tar. Everything Everywhere, Woman Talking, and The Fablemans. I gotta say, this year is so much better than last year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's just like, this year is night and day. I mean, we're in, down into like the, I mean, like, this is the screenplays we left out. We didn't even mention May, December, which has gotten a ton of nominations. That's I a know. great script. Air. The Air, All of Us Strangers. Saltburn. So. Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, I think would be a great nominee. Anyway, animated feature choice, then we'll go to TV. Spider-Verse, Boy in the Heron. Elemental, Nimona, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and then Trolls Band Together, which I saw in the theaters after 500 comments on our last video about how the NSYNC song should get nominated, none of which were bots. Just all organic comments. You know, you don't need to see the movie to hear the song. The song was released in September. I'm a completist. I wanted to see it as it was presented okay. at the end of the film. Like, you, you know that, right? You can listen to the song anytime. I know. I'm just kind of um, watching up on the silver screen. Anyway, I have Trolls in there. I have... Spidey, uh, Boy and Heron, Elemental, Super Mario, Chicken Run, and Nimona. Nice. I had Super Mario and I dropped it for Ninja Turtles because I was like, the show's on CBS. <laughs> so, not that there, not that there's any kind of corruption or anything, but I was like, just feels obvious that it will get nominated to me. Super Mario Brothers it feels like such a Globes nominee it does. and if, not an Oscar nominee. I would, if I was going to do it, I would put it in over Trolls, honestly. I think my, I think Ninja Turtles will get in. They're also really promoting Ninja Turtles, like on the campaign. Yeah, they had a, a screening last night. Yeah, um, I kept, I so, kept getting uh, invited. I can't make it. Yeah, and um, so they, we can't predict these, but they added, as we know, two new categories yes. this year. One, one for film and one for TV. The film one, cinematic and box office achievement. Right. So if it's six nominees, Oppenheimer, Barbie. It's, it's eight. Oh, it's eight. It's eight for that, yeah. So, But you also have to be submitted in order to be nominated. So it's like, did any, like what studios did not submit their film? I don't know. Like, what would you, what would your stab be? I mean, Oppenheimer and Barbie feel like locked unless like they weren't Mario. submitted. Which one? Mario. I think air could get in there. Um, I don't know what else. What else? Little Mermaid. Yeah, like what would have definitely submitted? 
Cocaine Bear. Uh, Mario. Do you think they'll just go for things that made massive amounts of money or something? Or like an indie film that did really well? Because that, that, that is less, uh, a, a, a box office achievement, too. I guess, but what office. would that be? Like, I don't know. And what would have submitted? I don't know. We'll find out next week. I like. What if we just didn't know? I, mean, I don't know. So, TV predictions, Joyce. We're back. We haven't talked about TV in months, and here we are. Um, and the Emmys still haven't happened. Emmys still haven't happened. So these are Globes that are not really predicting this year's Emmys. They're maybe trying to get a jump on some of next year's Emmys. Well, the the Globes can't copy anything the emmys did not that they do that often anyway right but there's no emmy reference point as there usually is i i had a tough time with this because i was just like again what are we doing here was the big question but here we go Well, it's the sixth slide i have succession for drama we'll do drama first if you're just joining us if you skipped ahead from the film what's the matter go back and watch the film one that was great now we're doing our tv gold globes picks golden globes picks we're starting with drama series. I have Succession, Last of Us, Critics' Choice Fave, The Morning Show, The Crown, Loki, and Justified City Primeval. Is, is your lineup like my dream ballad or something? I don't know. I was you trying have, to think of a you mix. You have Loki and Justified in there? I was trying to think of a mix of like, because some of these shows like in the odd, you go next and we can talk about this guy. Um, I have Succession. The Last of Us, The Crown, Critics' Choice Fave, The Morning Show, um, Hijack, and The Curse. I do not feel good about those last two at all. Okay, so the six and the odds are the four we've said, which are very obvious, those top four, and then Diplomat and Hijack. Hijack is a great show that's like 24 on Apple TV. It seems like Globesy, Idris Elba, sure, right? Like, I'm like, all of this checks the boxes. I almost had it in. But I was like, the curse is good. I'm loving it. But man, that show is not for everybody. And I just it have a hard not, time I believing. Just can't, it, so not just because of Emma Stone, it feels like another maniac to me. And, like, and that just went nowhere. <laughs> so I think Emma Stone could get in. But I don't think, I don't know. I just, Loki, I was like, man, people love Loki. And I think he can get in. And then Justified, I was like, I don't know. Throw my hands up. I know Joyce likes it. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know about this. I only feel good about the top four, and um, well, yeah, like the curse. It's it's like such a, it's it's like a film Twitter show. Yeah, there's you know? no way a people normal normal. I again watching it really like. Yeah, there's no way normal people are watching that show and being like, no, yeah. and there's like like not actually like real conversation about it either like the most buzz it had was when it mocked um the anyone but you trailer yes. thing and so and also the episodes are so long it's in, it's it's interminably long so i think long. that's part of the joke honestly i have to imagine it's part of their like it's the whole show is like a troll and i feel like that's part of it too even um, though it's really yeah. watchable i think so i don't so i because like i i thought about the diplomat but then i'm just like in series two, I don't know. And then there's like yellow jackets, but I, I just think mm. I was like thinking all of these. I'm like, I'm trying to think it's especially because now like they're not they don't have to be like in the like this is like now, right? They're voting now in theory, or like this, this it's like this time. And I'm like, yellow jackets is just out of sight, out of mind completely here. And also season two not, was you not know, great. Not great, Bob. Not great, Bob. Uh drama actor. I have Kieran, Jeremy for succession, obviously. Pedro Pascal, Brian Cox, Tom Hiddleston, and Timothy Oliphant. Fuck it. Why are you just like picking all my faves? I was like, I'm putting, because I just was looking at the nominees and I was like, so Idris Elba would make sense for high. You basically just copy the Critics' Choice nominations. I don't know. Kind of. I've watched the new seasons of The Crown, like the the for four and then some of the second half, which debuts soon. And I was like, Dominic West is not in it that much, but the show is actually much better this season than it was last season. Yeah, I know someone who finished part two and they, like they, yeah, like they think it's better than part one, but it's still messy and uneven. Yes. Um, yes. But it, 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 it's, it reverts 
to like uh, the old crown style which is a lot more episodic storytelling yes you know and it's like more focused on the politics and everything like there's a, a tony blair episode yeah. and then obviously they're also wrapping up the storylines i um, love uh and i really love the actors playing william and kate i think they're great in this new season they like my friend did not like that because so, because they were they were just like like they were not into like like they they felt and I think a lot of fans feel this way too because like, I don't really care about the crown but like a lot of fans did not like the the hyper focus on Diana, you know no. like it just kind of, like like that storyline just really overshadowed the it show. It kind of broke the show. Yeah, and like I think season four was still okay because it was like the introduction of Diana, and you still had like Margaret Thatcher there. Season four was amazing. Element. Yeah, that and then was season the five season. was just like like no yeah it, it just um, and it uh, it rendered the queen a completely like a supporting character. character she's not even in, in it really. no yeah it's very and then, strange yeah, and then part one of you know the last season is just all diana all the time yep and then ghost diana yep so it yeah so then like now that diana's gone in part two like my friend was excited because it was like oh yeah we're done with that <laughs> but then they still do like the melodrama stuff with will and kate I like I like the Will and Kate stuff, but I think the show is fine. But anyway, I don't have Dominic Weston, so that's my five. Hiddleston for Loki, it man, he's the best on that show. I want him to get in, and then I had Timothy Oliphant in because what the fuck, basically. What do you got? Uh, Kieran, Jeremy, Pedro, like no reason for any of them to miss. And then no idea what to do. Um, <laughs> uh, Idris Elba. For hijack makes sense. Omar Sai for Lupin, yes. great. And then I I have Nathan Fielder in here, and I don't think he'll get it. <laughs> what? No way! Oh my god! I don't like who am I, who else. This is why I don't want the sixth slot here. Brian I don't Cox. Want here. Just put Brian in. Like, I mean, Nathan Fielder is amazing on the show. Uh, they're not. And I have Emma Stone in session guys. They're not the Emmys. I know, but I have Emma Stone in later here when we do actress. But I don't have. I mean, I have Emma, here. but like I. Like when it was five, I didn't really think about this because I just did put in Idris and Omar. Yeah, that makes sense. You know? But then like this, like, I'm like, I don't, because I, like you said, like I wasn't really going to put in Dominic West. No. So He's also not in it. He's a supporting character in the second, in the last season. So. Well, they wrap up with, um, I don't know where you're at, but like they're the, they wrap up with the wedding, like Charles and Kimmel's wedding. Oh, so we didn't get the last episode. We got all but the last episode. So maybe that's the finale, right? Yeah, that's the finale. So, okay. um, uh, drama actress, I have Sarah Snook, Bella Ramsey, Jennifer Aniston, Melanie Linsky, Emma Stone, and Anjane Ellis Taylor. Double Globes nominee here for Justified City Primeval. Uh, you're just. <laughs> Did you even watch the original Justified? No. <laughs> My God. <laughs> um, I don't know what to do with the sixth slot here. I know, there you go. So So you could you could persuade me to change those because I don't feel good about those. I have Sarah, Bella, Jennifer, Emma, Carrie. And right now I have Melanie Linsky for Yellow Jackets, but I I don't believe in it. And I don't know if I wanna I because before I had Imelda Staunton, and I don't know if I just I wanna keep her. I, because like no. <laughs> I just, but then like who else is there? Like Helen Mirren for 1923, CBS Paramount Plus. I thought that also. Uh, I think if I was, or not should I have... just do Reese like double morning show? Maybe mm. I should just do that. She went I, to space. One person I was thinking of was Rebecca Ferguson for Silo, but I thought about her too. But I'm just, I don't know. We'll find out next week. I guess you can't wait. Can't maybe wait. maybe I'll just do Reese. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna copy Critics Choice here. It's awesome. <laughs> uh. Comedy series. This one's a little less chaotic. I have The Bear, Ted Lasso, Abbott, Jury Duty, Only Murders, and Poker Face. That's the top six in the odds. Um, I have The Bear, Only Murders, Abbott, Jury Duty, mm-hmm. Shrinking, and Ted. So you don't have poker face. No, but 
I again can be persuaded to put in poker face because I can see them not like just dropping Ted too. I don't think they would drop Ted. Do you think these shows will drop Ted? The Critics' Choice did. I don't know if they're which was be. amazing. The I don't only think nominated Paul Dunster. I mean, like they're not in love, but they're not as obsessed with Ted as like the Critics' Choice was. Like Ted basically swept in season one or the Emmys because they remember they awarded hacks over Ted for season one. I feel like they were allowed to drop Ted because it's over, and then they're just like we don't have to feel like we're going to be hurting any future in- invites to the show. This is the Critics' Choice Awards. Not that they would ever think. Like no, that I think it, it was dropped because season three was also not great, Bob. <laughs> so, right. Um, and <clears throat> I don't know if the Globes would do it too. So I don't know. I don't know. Because I already have Shrinking in there as an Apple show. That's fair. And I mean, drinking show. is great, but I actually don't have it in a lot of places, sadly, even though I loved it. And it meant multiple people from the show. It was a great show. So. Comedy actor. We could do that here. I have Jeremy Allen White, uh, Jason Sudeikis, Steve Martin, Martin Short, Bill Hader, and uh, Jarrell Jerome for I'm a Virgo. I think I have the consensus here. It's Jeremy, Martin, Siegel. Siegel's Bill. the last one. I dropped Siegel for Jarrell. And then Sudeikis and Steve Martin. Kelsey Grammer getting in here? I thought about him. CBS his own? Frazier. Wouldn't be shocked. So, uh, not not a... After, after him, really, just a lot of long shots. <laughs> yeah. Here's how you know these people... The, the odd... The, the updates have not been fluent on... Uh, uh, very... Uh, Frequent, excuse me, on the on the Globes predictions because I have for comedy actress. I have Iowa Debris in first place. I think she's easily going to win here, but she's in like fifth in the odds. So, yeah, because they she moved to lead yes. like three weeks ago. Uh, so I have her first. Then I have Natasha Leone, Quinta Brunson, Rachel Brosnahan, Selena Gomez, and Devery Jacobs for Reservation Dogs. Um, I have Io, Quinta, Rachel, Selena, Natasha. And Sarah Lancashire for Julia. Hell yeah. Globes. That's a good just, Globes pick. I like I so I haven't watched season two of Julia yet. No. I keep saying like I'm going to and I just haven't. But she was great on season one. They didn't do it, go for her in season one. Um and then I don't know. I thought about Elle Fanning, who I think is like next in line, right? She's in six odds. in the odds. Yeah, I don't know. It just feels like she's in six because people are just like, I gotta do six. All right. No offense, Dale. Great show. Great performance. And sadly canceled. Uh, so, yeah. Limited series movie. Beef. These are all of these are rough. I have a lot of shows though I loved. Beef, Fargo, Daisy Jones, Lessons in Chemistry, A Small Light, and Murder at the End of the World are my six. I have Beef, Daisy, Fargo, Lessons in Chemistry, A Small Light, and fellow travelers showtime paramount plus exactly CBS. they do the globes love showtime more than anyone else good pick that's a good pick uh all these shows you know what's great the new season of fargo you love it it's great so good uh limited movie actor it's weird that we just have to say limited limited series movie actor there's nothing limited about these well it's like we say drama and comedy we I know. for those I know. Stephen Young for Beef. I have John Hamm for Fargo, which is absolutely fucking annihilating it on this season. David Oyelowo for Lawman, Bass Reeves, Paramount's own. Sam Claflin and Daisy Jones. Tom Holland, The Crowded Room. And Matt Bomber for Fellow Travelers. Um, I have Stephen, Matt, John, Sam, Kiefer Sutherland for The Came Mutiny Court Martial. Showtime. And David. Paramount Plus. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought of Kiefer as well. He's actually six in the odds. We left out Matthew Broderick, who is fifth, I believe, for Painkiller. Pain which uh, came and went. I have Tom Holland in there because he's famous and he's been doing press for the Crowder Room. That's all. That's yes, the only he really, he really loves yeah. the project. Yeah. So he got in at Critics' Choice over mm-hmm. John Hamm. I so. think John on Vargo is just amazing. So... It's just like yeah. one of his best 
he's like in his like he's just a just a tv pro i think there's again it's like there's not a lot like just a lot of long shots after this yeah uh for tv limited series movie actress and ali wong for beef brie larson for lessons in chemistry juno temple for fargo riley keogh for daisy jones bell powley a small light and dominique fishback for swarm um i have the same we left out rachel vice for dead ringers who's fourth in the odds feels like that show is doa unfortunately yeah um and uzo I... adubo is uh, aduba is next for painkiller also we left out yeah like i'm not sure about juno but i'm just like sure and and then bell this is like kind of what i felt about a small light which just came out way too late for the emmys it premiered may 1st mm -hmm. you know but it's been hitting like all this winter stuff since. it won at the gotham awards yeah and then she got in at spirits yesterday so person i would like to highlight sydney sweeney for reality i don't think she's gonna get in but it would feel very glowsy if she did and she's awesome in the movie. I know. And I would love Betty Gilpin, but I just like Mrs. Davis. I don't think if they would reality was a movie that was in theaters, would she be getting more buzz as a best actress contender? Well, more buzz. Yes. But I don't think she would make it in the end. I don't think she would make it in the end either, but I think she would win like one of these like regional critics awards. Certainly. Oh yeah. She'll definitely be nominated because there's like 312 of them. So uh, TV supporting actor Joyce, this combines everything. Just a... Well, last year they split it. Just one year only. They split it into supporting actor or supporting performers, comedy slash drama. And then just one for limited and TV movie. But now they're just one again. So I've got Matthew McFadden, James Marsden, Evan Moss Bacharach, Billy Crudup, Phil Dunster, and Harrison Ford. I have Matthew, Evan, Billy, James, Harrison, and Lewis Pullman for Lessons in Chemistry. Nice. Yeah, I did not just want to go with um like the Emmy nominees, not Harrison Ford, obviously, but mm -hmm. like those those were, you know, top Emmy predictions. Mm -hmm. And then now that it's merged again, the category here, I felt like I needed someone from like a limited series or a movie. Um so I I thought about Jonathan Bailey for Fellow Travelers um, and Lee F. Schreiber for A Small Light. But then I just went with Lewis Pullman. It's funny because I went with, an, in supporting actress, I went with my Lessons in Chemistry pick, not here. Oh, right. Yeah, um, I thought about having all three of them and then I didn't do it. So so supporting actress, I have Meryl Streep for Only Murders, Cheryl Lee Ralph for Abbott, Elizabeth Debicki for The Crown, Hannah Waddingham for Ted Lasso, Alex Borstein for Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Maisel and Aja Naomi King for Lessons in Chemistry. I have Meryl, Elizabeth, Hannah Waddingham, um, Cheryl, Janelle James, and Jennifer Jason Lee for your fave Fargo. She's pretty good on Fargo. It's great. It's great watching her do. It's great watching her do fake Coen Brothers when she was in the Coen Brothers movies. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure about the Abbott ladies. So I picked Cheryl over Janelle. I don't know. I could have them both in, but I thought Aja Naomi King, and certainly you compare like of the three in Lessons in Chemistry, like Lewis has the least to do because of what happens with his character. But he does have a whole episode. To yeah. Follow. True. But she also has like a lot to do. I don't know. She's great. I think in the show. I can definitely see. Well, I can see all of them getting in at the Emmys. Maybe. So. And that's our, that's it, Joyce. We did it. So those are our Globes picks. We'll be back on Monday. Um, with these will be like all wrong. So. Uh, I guess we'll be back Monday. We know when the nominations are on Monday. They're always at like 8 a.m. Eastern. So, I mean, they haven't announced any details yet, but. I hope Snoop Dogg does it again. And we'll be back. I get, I we'll be back later that morning then to talk about it. And that'll be fun for for your listeners. Now we're going to do emails, Joyce. Got so many. Let's see. Where do I want to start? Wow, this you're is, so disorganized. I'm not like, really. I'm just like, what we're going to do here? Let me start. <laughs> Here's one. This is from Sam. He emailed us at slugfest at goldderby.com. Hi, Joyce and Chris. I just saw Maestro. Well, I'm not sure how good I think it was, 
It left me feeling with melancholy, and I can't stop thinking about it. I also think Bradley and Carrie were phenomenal in their performances. My question is about Barbie, though. Why are people so high on Greta Gerwig getting a nomination? This is a branch that has repeatedly shown it doesn't often nominate women, and even more recently that it does not nominate directors of big blockbuster-type movies. Both Denny Villeneuve and James Cameron didn't get in for Dune and Avatar 2, respectively, and both of those movies had much more of an Oscar sheen, in my opinion, than Barbie does. Joker got in, but even that is more of an oscar movie that made a billion dollars because of Batman IP. The last traditional blockbuster movie to get a director nom, I think, is Mad Max in 2016, so I currently don't have him making credit making it in. Curious your thoughts. That's Sam. Um, I feel like you should chime in first as the Barbie stan here. I have Greta in. Uh, I don't disagree with the premise that they are sexist and they only nominate uh, people they've nominated, but they've already nominated her for Little Women. So I feel like uh, she's already got that like. Uh, but as we know, also hard for a woman to get the second arm. I think in this case, champion. <laughs> I think in this case, uh, the movie success is so tied to her. I think people really did like it. And I think a lot of directors, at least just publicly from what we've seen, who knows in reality, but people talking about the film love what she was able to do with it. And that's why I have her in. I think with like, I disagree with the idea that it doesn't have an Oscar sheen compared to Joker. I think they could end up with like the same amount of nominations, really, maybe. Certainly double digits for Barbie is in play with all the songs and the crafts that'll be involved. Um, I think there's more passion than there was for Dune and Avatar, and that's why both those guys didn't get in. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like she'll get in. I think the Joker comp is not bad, and I think Mad Max is not bad, but if, think of Mad Max. That was like a movie that transcended its genre, and I think Barbie does too, so that's why I have her in. I think what he was getting out of the Joker thing is like, it's just, it was like, you know, gr- a gritty drama, like, you know, and it was like ripping off of like Taxi Driver and everything. You sure. Know? Which and like Barbie is, you know, a fun, very pink comedy about a doll. Um, but yeah, I I think she can get it. I think this year is just very crowded up top. Like she just has a habit of competing in very stacked years. <laughs> You know, and like obviously she got in with Lady Bird, um, but like you know, mm-hmm. little like twenty nineteen that was just really tough, and Little Woman was so late. Um, and like I don't think they're thinking about like oh we snubbed her for Little Woman, so we got a nominator now. Like they don't have right. no idea what happened four years ago. Um, but yeah, like I I can see like as much as there is like visible support on the trail for her that we've seen and she's obviously been doing a lot of campaigning you know she was just on uh cbs sunday morning this week just like a ton of events too Mm -hmm. like i i do think there are some people you know like not maybe not the silent majority but definitely people who don't vocalize that they're not into it or like they're like you know like the snobby uh section who's just you know like as like one of our listeners said like weeks ago like oh it's just about a doll you know like they don't think it's worthy enough and we know the branch is very insular um and just go their own way like they might not care that it made a billion dollars and was this huge phenomenon so i think my issue with um i don't i don't have her in right now um, but like I expect her to get in at DGA and I don't know if I want to predict the DGA five as my yeah. Oscar five because they haven't matched in 14 years I I think we're like the other thing is I think we're like overthinking this branch maybe a little too I don't she doesn't need that many, like she has a lot of support I, I said little women I meant like heard before we we're saying she's nominated oh, but I was like I think she does have a lot of support I think she can get in very uh pretty easily with not a lot of like you know what I mean she doesn't need like a lot of top like it's a small I branch. think I, I think if like the voting structure were just appearances on ballots she would get in but since it is like ranked you know like like I think she would have like her share of number ones but I can see people just putting her like four or five or just not maybe you know putting her on a ballot at all too maybe like I think there's like a, a wider stretch of for her to cover or like or like of her showing up on ballots then i kind of feel that way about 
Yorgos a little. I'm like not concerned. I'm a little not concerned, but I'm like, I think he's going to have, like he feels like a I mean, guy like at the he, back end. Already, like he's like similar boat to her too. Like they nominated him last time too for like a, like a weird movie, right? Yeah, I just feel like last time that movie was like, I feel like that was a great, that was a top movie and I'm not sure poor things is, I don't know, not divisive, but I'm like, I feel like he's going to be like a three, four, three, four, five guy on the ballots, which maybe is enough. He, I mean, he got in last time without a DJ nomination, which is impressive. Right. So. This email is from yeah. Brad Joyce. Hi, Joyce and Chris. The Golden Globes is actually pretty interesting this year because they're back on network television. And there's been a significant change in the voting body. And for the television awards, the Emmy winners have not been announced. So there won't be much influence from that Academy. I know Joyce has argued for less rubber stamping, and this would be a perfect opportunity for the Globes to show their own and their new personality through their nominations and winners, particularly in the television realm. Do you think the Globes will go their own way, or do you think they'll try to follow the Emmys' lead to bolster their legitimacy? Also, the eligibility window is different, so the overlap is limited. Do you think that the spring shows like Mrs. Davis, Love and Death, or A Small Light will have a better chance getting recognized despite getting little recognition from the Emmys? That's from Brad. Uh, well, we already talked about A Small Light, so... I have it. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I don't have Mrs. Davis. We talked about that too, I guess. I think it's a little bit like too weird for them. And it wasn't uh, like, it wasn't like a, like a huge hit or anything, you know, would love to see it though. Um, And I mean, they, they tend to go their own way sometimes, even with the, the Emmys having aired in September. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, so like last year, there are TV winners, like they gave three awards to Abbott Elementary, which obviously did not win series at the Emmys mm-hmm. last year. Um, and then House of the Dragon, how could we forget for drama series? Um, but so I can see, um, like if we ex- like suspect succession to dominate the Emmys, which are happening eight days later. Um, I can see it at, at like not winning as many at the Globes. Mm-hmm. You know, I I could see that too. I could see actually like Last of Us winning series or something, or Pedro winning actor. Yeah, and like also they've given series to Succession twice, and they don't really like only two shows have won drama series. Um three times and uh, X Files and mm-hmm. Mad Men. I mean, like I obviously would give it to it for their time, but you know. It also sometimes feels like those want to like think they'll think ahead. Right? Now this year's a little messed up because there's not gonna be another like Last of Us won't win at the 2024 Emmys part two because it won't be on yet. Yeah. Or but. it's also um like like remember when um Schitt's Creek swept the Emmys mm-hmm. and uh you know so that forced the globes to nominate it too but they only gave it two wins it they just gave it series and uh catherine o'hara right you know so i could see that happening but again we don't have the emmy winners for eight more days (laughs) pretty great so um yeah i don't know this is from our old pal harold and mod love harold and mod hi joyce and chris i hope you're doing well my question today is about Barbie and which screenplay category it will be considered in. While a lot of people have accepted its placement in original, I think the Oscars in particular are steadfast in keeping scripts and adapted that have any ounce of previously thought of material, which Barbie has a lot of. But I also wouldn't put it past the Academy Academy to want to give Barbie an easier, in quotes, chance at a win and allowing it to stay in original screenplay. What category do you think it will end up in? And do you think it has a chance to win in either? I personally won't vote for it in either, but that's just me. Wow, Barbie catching strays today. How do you feel? I mean, I'm, I'm expect I expect it. You can't be popular and then like wait until the Oppenheimer haters start coming out. You know, it's like you um, did you popular. get the the Barbie script? I did. I love it. I I love it because they included photos of the dolls and the toys in the script. Great. It's great. Love great it so swag. Much. Send uh send more swag. That's like that. Yeah, like that. <laughs> Not all swag is like that. Not all swag is like that. A small book, it's great. Love a yeah, book. Yeah, small. Like some, sometimes they send scripts that are just too big and too heavy. Yeah, 
yeah uh so i think i don't have it i don't think i would have a maybe i have a winning now and then, let me check i actually don't remember what i have in original um i think i have holdovers i think i think it's very easy to imagine like when you're thinking of like this just like visualizing Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach winning an Oscar for this movie or just winning an Oscar is very easy to imagine. But I think that's easy for fans to imagine. I don't know if voters are caring to imagine that. I have Barbie in first and Holdovers in second. Um, I think Holdovers could easily win. Depends on how like the rest of the nominations go and if people love it. Uh, I think maybe December could win. I think May December could win too. I don't think it'll be moved, but it could be. I guess. I actually I, don't think it's adapted to me because it's based on a toy. But there's not really. It's not really. Yeah, I mean, we we talked about this yeah. a while ago, but yeah. just like based on what the Oscars have done yeah. historically, it feels yeah. like they would move it. You know, they can like, like they put in like you know sequels and adapt it, even though like you're coming with an original story, which is what Greta and Noah did with now, Barbie. If they move it, I think it'll get in either place because yeah. Adapted well, if is... they move it, it makes adapted very easy to predict. Yes. Uh, so I don't know. I don't think it'll like I have Oppenheimer winning because like we talked about, if it's going to win Best Picture, it's probably going to win the screenplay category, based on recent history. Um, I yeah, like it can win screenplay and director. Uh, I don't think it necessarily needs screenplay. But it could definitely no. pull it along. And um, I have uh, I have American Fiction in second. And adapt. Yeah, I do too. I mean, like if if it gets moved to adapt it, I would just have Oppie, American Fiction, Poor Things, Flower Moon, and Barbie. <laughs> yep. I currently have the zone of interest. I have Are You There, God? It's Me, and Margaret, just to have something different. Of course you do. Yeah, uh, I don't think it would win adapted. Um, <clears throat> it has a like you said, it has a better chance of winning original. Uh, but I have it in second right now. Yeah. So. This one's from Guillermo, our old pal. Emailed us at slugfest at goldderby.com. Hey guys, I'm thinking about this scenario. Golden Globes. Lily Gladstone wins Best Drama Actress. And Fantasia wins Comedy Musical Actress. BAFTA Awards. Emma Stone wins. SAG Awards. Margot Robbie wins. Making it a good race. Thoughts about this distribution? As Joy says, I hate sweeps. Which other that combinations... Awesome. Which other combinations do you see coming up in other categories? Um, yes, more of that, please. Different winners everywhere. So I could see this happening very easily. Again, visualizing it. I have Lily winning drama actress. I have I could easily see Fantasia winning comedy musical actress. Yeah. Um, I do feel like if Lily wins the globe, she is set up to sweep. I get the feeling, even if BAFTA does do Emma Stone, which I could see. Like, I think SAG will definitely go for Lily. I feel like it's like a lock upon locks now. It's just like, you know, like she'll give, she'll be able to give a speech at the Globe. She'll give a great speech. We know that. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, like SAG is the most socially conscious group too. And she's just like the kind of act, like a long, like a, not a struggling actor, but an actor who's like worked her way up. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's such a compelling SAG. Well, yeah. Like she's just been working in independent cinema and, for forever so and now you know she was she like that's all part of her narrative she was about to go to like b school yeah and then she had her credit card out to sign up for classes and then she gets an email telling her marty scorsese wants to meet you on a zoom so i i'm also with emma i'm wondering this could be completely wrong because i'm sure she's going to do a ton it feels to me like she's done more for she loves this movie clearly as a producer and like she's very supportive of it but i'm like I feel like she has not done as much campaigning for this as like you would maybe have expected her to do. Um, I mean, like she also couldn't for a couple months. True. And True. even though people <clears throat> accused her of campaigning when she was campaigning for Bleat. Which, Matt Bellany was all over that. Just must have yeah. she must have sent him a bad email once or something. Um uh yeah, and uh no, I think it's just like I don't think she needs to go overboard because it's like, you know, she's a former winner. She's a huge star. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, I think it like it will like pick up steam like as we get along. Like, I don't think she needs to overdo it right now in like this early phase one. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the movie is not out yet. I think it would have been different if the movie had stuck to its original release date of September 8th. She also necessarily doesn't need to do a lot for phase one because she's like, it would be a complete surprise if she wasn't nominated. Yeah. What so, I was th- Here's what I was thinking of this morning. Um, I still am holding on like this to Margot Robbie in like fifth place for my best actress odds. Assuming I drop her once like we see other data points and like I put in Sandra Holler or Fantasia or whoever ends up popping. Is there a world where Ryan gets snubbed in supporting actor? Do you think that could ever happen? Um, I mean, sure, it can happen. I mean, I mean, obviously, but like, is yeah. that something that you've thought of at all? Like, I was wondering, is he going to be like the Jennifer Lopez of Hustlers in no, this movie? Is like way more. Light. I don't think. Like he doesn't have the, for lack of a better term, the baggage of a J Lo. Okay. You know, he's a former nominee, and Barbie was obviously a way bigger hit than Hustlers. Like she mm-hmm. was going to be that movie's only nomination. Right. Right. No, I know. I know. I'm just like, it just made me, I was no. like, huh, interesting. That's what I was thinking. I was like, maybe. No, I like, I think, like, I think he's safer than Margot. <laughs> I mean, I definitely think he's safer than Margot. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, And then like, you know, the supporting category is also friendlier to comedy performances. Yes. So, um, but so to answer the question, like what other combos and other categories do you want? So I'd like to see like supporting actor, I think could be a lot of different ones. That would be nice. Like I'd like, like to see Ryan Downey. Could easily win the globe. What's that? Ryan could easily win the globe. I'd like to see Ryan win the globe. I'd like to see Charles win Zag. And I'd like to see Downey win the Oscar. <laughs> like who's gonna win BAFTA? Defoe. And then supporting actress similarly could be unhinged because I think it could easily be a sweep, like we've said. I think like Danielle I mean, would probably... Dave has been doing well with critics so far. I'm not surprised because like the critics did not like Color Purple, it seems. A lot of people I've talked to who are not... I think it's, um you know, late late screening too. So maybe some of these groups have not seen yeah. it yet. Um, or also maybe they're like divided between Danielle and Taraji as well. Maybe. I think so... it's more that they didn't like it as much. But I do think like Devon... I think Danielle could win at the Globes. I think Divine could win SAG. And then like Danielle. Yeah, I, I like Danielle is more of a SAG winner because they're just like more basic. What if Jody wins SAG? Oh Wouldn't that be great? Maybe she won for Nell, so um Danielle wins Globes, Jody wins SAG, Divine wins BAFTA. And then or Emily wins- Blunt wins BAFTA. And then Divine wins the Oscar. I don't know. We're just making up things here that these are all going to be sweeps, probably. How about, actor, how about actor? Because you have Bradley everywhere for actor. I think I'm changing up a little. I have Bradley still winning at the Oscars. I think SAG. I kind of do think SAG is such like a Bradley. Like they they would go like you know just classic transformation. So I think like we said like I think Jeffrey would win at the Globes for comedy, and then like Killian or Bradley could win at the Globes. I could see Killian winning actually. Yeah. And then SAG for Bradley. And then BAFTA would be Killian, I guess. So it'll be split between him and Bradley. And then going into the Oscars, I think it depends on like what the movies are playing. I still I think Killian could easily win though, like we've talked about. Like would not be the biggest shock. Yeah. Um I, I think like if if it's like a lot of the same people getting in error, it's harder for these kind of you know, different choices to happen. So I think we need like some forced splits, you know, people yeah. not nominate at places. So like yeah. they have to choose someone different. That's always the best. Yeah. This one's from Angela who emails at slugfest, slugfest at goldderby.com. Uh, hi, Joyce and Chris, love the show. Uh, wondering what was on your Spotify wrapped this year? And Chris, was it all Taylor Swift? I got my phone out. I'm looking right now. It wasn't have all you... Taylor Swift. Uh, my top artist was Taylor Swift. I believe I was in the top 2% or 3%. Uh, I think I still have my screen grab, so I don't need to open my app. Okay. But my number one song, Joyce, with the bullet was Vampire by Olivia Rodrigo. Wow, not a not a Taylor song, huh? No, a great song. Just a total banger. Big Olivia what, What's your top five songs? Vampire, Love Story, Taylor's version. Look at us now, Honeycomb from Daisy Jones course, and the Six. Of course. 
Bad Idea Right by Olivia Rodrigo, and Antihero by Taylor Swift. Then the, the next five, just while we're doing it, is Speed Drive from Barbie Soundtrack, Girl is on Fire by Alicia Keys, one of my daughter's faves, Choose Your Fighter by Ava Max from the Barbie Soundtrack, Shake It Off, and then What Was I Made For from the Barbie Soundtrack. Wow. So How about you? What do you got? Um, my mine is just classic me. So my top yeah. five artists. My top two are the same every year. Okay. Number one with a bullet, Eminem. Number two, Nicholas Patel. He was three for me. He was three of my artists. They're always my top two, my October okay. 17 boys. <laughs> Number three, John Mayer. Wow. Number That's four. I, I love John Mayer. He's been on my top five before. Oh, okay. Number four, Lifehouse. This is more of a surprise, but I think I know what happened because I often play the playlists that Spotify generates for me. And mm-hmm. a lot of them are just like mm-hmm. 2000s mix. Hanging by a moment, just overplaying. Yeah, hanging it. by a moment, like you and me. Like yeah. I remember them a lot on the playlists. And then number five, Matchbox 20. Nice. And then my top songs, all m M&M. and <laughs> Number one, Till I Collapse. The best-selling non-single of all time, R.I.P. Nate Dog. Number two, Headlights. Um, number three, Godzilla, R.I.P. Juice World. Number oh. four, Stan, of course. Number five, Lose Yourself. But there, the key art for Lose Yourself is wrong. They need to fix this. So I was the only thing I was shocked by was that um, Ryan Gosling's mm-hmm. cover of Push did not make it into my top five. That ended up at number eight so- in my top ten. Tell me if you think of this, and I would love to know if if somebody's working for Spotify can email and tell me now. D- does it have to be to completion? Because I'm like a lot of times it's, I'll it's just at least thirty seconds. I think. Okay. I think they count it as like, a play if it's thirty seconds. A lot of times I won't wait for it to go to. The, I'll just repeat, 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 repeat. Yeah. And I wonder if that counts. I'm like. I don't know. Yeah, like I think Eminem just dominated. I ended up having six Eminem songs in my top ten, and then you know what was number six. Or like in my top 10 overall, it was Andante Resoluto. So Bertel just missed my top five. So I don't know if I had that in the top six. Let me see. Hang on. I had that later. Yeah, I had Andante Resoluto in the top 20. Bertel is my top third artist. I think it was Taylor or Olivia Rodrigo, Nicholas Bertel, Daisy Jones in the sixth, and the musical of the sixth, uh, which I also listen to a lot. Um, um the <clears throat> the succession theme was my number 100 nice that's good yeah most of my my top 100 it was like three quarters m M&M and succession season four soundtrack just the best it's like succession season four truly the best he's ever done never been better for nikki amazing and then you know he was my only artist message in my rap Oh, cool. Last year, I, I also had messages from Hanson and Third Eye Blind. I only had Taylor in mine. She talked oh. right to me. It was a personal message. Wait, why didn't you get, why didn't you get um, Bertels? I didn't get it. I oh. only got Taylor. I only got one message just from Taylor. She says hi. Oh. Uh, this email's from Leo. The Morning Show received Critics' Choice nominations, more, excuse me, The Morning Show received more Critics' Choice nominations than Succession. What the hell is going on? Is everyone drunk? Also, do we all need to start watching Will Trent? Um, uh, just like pure chaos, Critics' Choice. We didn't even mention Critics' Choice, really. <laughs> that was yesterday. Uh, they love. I men. can't say I'm really surprised. I did see a tweet yesterday that was like these nominations. Uh, just show that, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how incomprehensible you are. Like you can still get nominated for awards, like the morning show. Mm-hmm. Um, no, it seems like a, a lot of the nominations were just like very like recency bias meaning. Yeah, you know. So, uh, yeah, I think it's it's just I think the the prior to this year, the only person they've ever nominated from the morning show was Billy Crudup, who won the first year. So it does feel weird that it exploded this way but i will have to say that season three of the morning show like completely nonsensical but very entertaining super watchable yeah the make more nonsense. watchable stuff make watchable but, stuff yeah just like i i think so i think like that's just kind of why it it did so well it did crack me up that it got double supporting actress nominations and none for juliana margulies so 
dodged that. Has she been in the news? Has she been in the news lately? I don't know. So I'll have to Google her and see what's going on lately. I haven't heard from her in a little bit. Uh, Yeah. And then Will Trent, I'm very happy about Will Trent. uh, (laughs) Because he, like, Ramon Rodriguez got two nominations yesterday because he got in at Indie Spirits. And then, like, an hour later, Critics' Choice. Um, it's, uh, I only watched a pilot of Will Trent, but just like, you know, classic, charming procedural on ABC mm-hmm. and, uh, has an adorable chihuahua on the show. Her name is Betty in real life. Yeah. Her name is Bluebell. So at TCA in January, they had a Will Trent panel and did you talk Betty to the dog on the panel? Yeah. Like she was like on the panel, like she had a seat and everything. Oh. Great panel. Very entertaining. And then they, during lunch, they had a photo op session with Betty. I didn't do it because the line was too long, but it was set up. Betty was in the director's chair, like in the foyer area, like right in front of where lunch was. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to eat. So I was just walking to lunch and Betty had peed on the floor. I keep calling her Betty. It's Bluebell, but like Betty. So then they were trying to clean up the pee. I'm sure that's not the first time somebody's peed on the floor at TCA. It's true. So then like there's this huge line and people are trying to like pose with Betty, but then there's urine on the floor. My friend did wait in line to get a photo with Betty. So yeah. That's another critic's choice email here. Uh, This one is from not Tom Hiddleston. So I'm thinking it might be from Tom Hiddleston. who emailed us at slugfest.goldurber.com. And if Tom, if you're listening... Love your stuff on Loki. And this is a question here from not Tom Hiddleston. I know we shouldn't take the Critics' Choice nomination seriously, but do you think Nods or Loki could translate to nominations elsewhere? I do. I have it in at the Globes. So You you have all my faves at the Globes. Um, I do love the, their drama line up here at the Critics' Choice because they, they did Hiddles and Tim. Yes. In addition to my succession guys. So, so the reason I put them in at the Globes and the reason I think they could actually make hay at the Emmys too is there's just not a lot of stuff. We're just, because the strike well, is not as much. I, I'm not like, so the, if we're talking about the Emmys, the Emmys have never really been high on Justified. Like, like obviously Jeremy no. Davies won and guest and Margot Martel won when she was just dominating um, in 2011. Um, but the show itself and Tim only got in when Breaking Bad sat out. <laughs> Mm-hmm. of when it was ineligible um and and then they never touched again above the line so i don't know how much attention like they'll be paying to primeval um but with loki we saw with season one that uh you know it was emmy nominated in crafts and the score natalie holt let's go so good. and as it good got as... some guild nominations like it got wga nominations for season one mm-hmm. so i get to see it performing well you know below the line as well and maybe i don't maybe could get like wga again i don't know who knows um i'm not sure about acting though but i would love to see it like uh, hiddles nominated for loki boy he's so good come on i also could see kiyu kwan getting in just because it's like get him in there invite him to the emmys for the emmys i don't know i feel like it's gonna like be pretty open hiddles would be the only acting emmy nominee yeah, they, maybe. I mean, probably, but it is wide open. Because, like, supporting is just cr- more crowded anyway, even if, like, right now it seems like there's not a lot of shows competition, you know? Yeah, yeah and shows. But, yeah. Last one here, Joyce, before we sign off. This is Jen G. Emailed us at slugfest at goldderby.com. Joyce, I assume you've seen the Rafa's announcement that he's back. What are his chances of being successful in 24 and follow up? What are your thoughts about the editing of the announcement video? Oscar worthy? Oh my God. Most editing. I didn't it's, watch it. So. Well, you should. So on Friday, he announced that he's back next season because he hasn't played since the second round of the Australian Open this year in January. Lost or not. And he had a hip injury and he just never, he just sat out the rest of the season. So, and you know, he's old, <laughs> old in tennis terms. Um, so, and then he had previously said that like next season, if he comes back might be his last season, which he did not say in this announcement on Friday, but he just confirmed that he Mm -hmm. will play next season. Um, and his first tournament will be Brisbane. Okay. So next month. And then, yeah, the, 
they edited this video and it's hilarious because it's so dramatic it's like a fucking trailer the first half is in black and white and it shows like his injury and everything and all like his rehab and then it just cuts to him like talking head style he's in this like cream sweater and then he's just announcing that he's gonna return in next month and just like most editing but it's probably just only secondary to bow rap in editing and then you think <laughs> that's over like you like the announcement and like that's it right we'll see you in a month and then he's since released two more videos like the next day or two days later and then one this morning and it's just like he's saying nothing but it's like the same interview style and he's just talking about like his doubts and like how hard he's worked and it's like we know this Rafa you don't need to tell us this we know and then he's like, I, I don't know how I'm going to perform, but like, I want to try and like, I think I can do it. And it's like, yeah, cool. Um, I don't know how he'll do because it's like he's he's defied expectations before. Like he's come back from so many injuries and surgeries and then has continued to win. Um, I, I don't expect him to win the Australian Open. And obviously his playground is clay. So I think like his focus is Roland Garros. And he'll try to go for number 15. So I'll never count him out at the French Open. And then next year is also the Olympics. And right. it's in Paris. And the tennis tournament is going to be played at Roland Garros. So it's going to be on clay again. So he can win another gold medal. So I do think his focus is clay. Like, like the hard courts are just hard on his knees. He's had so many knee problems. And then like same thing with grass too, because it's too fast for him. So I think his focus is clay. And then, yeah, like, I, I do think he'll win a title, maybe like lower level stuff. But I don't know about a slam. But if it's any slam, obviously, it'll be Roland Garros. Okay. People love the tennis stuff, Joyce. We get a lot of comments. Yeah. Do they? they do. In the, in the, in this, in the, in the YouTube. Amidst 500 comments about... Uh, uh, amidst the, the troll? Amidst the 500 Thanks. comments about Trolls World Tour or whatever well, that song are you is. Are you going to put in in sync? And your I did song immediately. I'm very okay. swayed by comments. I was like, "Oh boy, I gotta put it in." I don't even remember what the song is called. Better things, better life, mm-hmm. better place, better. Um, place. It's okay. The song. I I had some notes on the movie, Joyce. You know, I feel like they spilled the entire plot in the trailer. Yeah, just to get like in sync in the trailer. <laughs> They're really not in the movie. They show up right at the end. Spoiler alert, if you're worrying about Trolls uh, band together. It's right at the end, they show up. Uh, yeah, I have notes on the movie. It's fine. Do you yeah. like it more than Wish? Close. I think Trolls is a better movie, and I actually do think the Wish songs are better, or good. I didn't. I, I wanted the music in Trolls, so like, I didn't like the last one, Trolls band together, I thought was pretty tough. Um, Or was this Trolls band together? What was it? Trolls World Tour? Trolls I don't World even remember. Tour. World, World Tour was the last one from 2020. Uh, that one, not my fave either, but at least it had like more of a, a karaoke songs, you know, like a lot of pop songs, like kind of like sing style. They're just like all singing songs. And this one, I was like, you're doing TRL. Give me I some more TRL. TRL songs. But there's not, there's no, like, they don't really do a lot of like songs. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, there's not like, it's not like just all bangers. Uh, what are the, the other songs? Well, any of the they could have just done like you know like needle drops of like Britney Spears and Insane. I know, and so, but Blood. what did they include? Like nothing. I don't even know nothing. Like I'm trying to see if I could look at the soundtrack here. It's like you know, trolls soundtrack. Let's see. Uh, perfect. It takes two. Uh, you know nothing, nothing good. I don't know nothing surprising. Maybe they couldn't get clearance. No, they could because it's like Justin Timberlake is like in it. I mean, like, and they have like all the like well, like other like non Justin Timberlake songs. I guess so. I mean, it's it's fine. I thought it was pretty good. My daughter, my daughter liked it. She thought it was good. The best part was that the villains are uh, Amy Schumer and Andrew Rannells and Zoja Mamet. So it's like a girls uh, girls reunion. Um, but if Better Place does get in, like only. Justin would be nominated because the other guys did not write the song. So he's the only one who's actually eligible for yes. the Oscar. Justin would get nominated, but they would all perform at the Oscars. Yes, obviously they will all perform. And we all remember InSync's performance of Music of My Heart with Gloria Stefan at the Oscars. So that'd be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, they do like mashups, like Island and I'm looking at like the song rise. There's like, oh, they do a nine to fives. That was pretty good. Uh, I don't know. It's fine. It was totally fine. I think it's better than Wish as a movie. But Did like your I said, daughter I think... like it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does Wish she still it. like Wish? No. She would. Oh. She was still like. Eh, we still listen Lift to music. Flip Hopper again, like you. So no, the music she liked. She never. She didn't like the movie. The music she liked. But you said last time you asked her, and then she wanted to see it again. But she was yeah. out on the eyes. She didn't like the green eyes. We're still like going over that. I definitely want to see Wonka again with her though, because that was great. So Wonka is her favorite film of the year. No, I don't think so. I think Trolls is probably her favorite, or Paw Patrol. The last Mighty Mighty Pups Paw Patrol we've watched like four times. Great film. So good. Not as good as the first Paw Patrol, which I thought was great. It's true. Yeah. So uh, we'll see if those get into the Globes or as an animated feature. Maybe all of them will. Paw Patrol, Paramount Plus. Let's go. Get in there at the Globes. Does it, is it eligible? It must be. It was it in theaters? Um, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Right? It was in September. I don't, I don't know. What is Last thing before we go. Do you think the Globes will nominate Taylor Swift, Eras Tour in the uh, box office category? If they submit it, I think she would submit it. I think she, she would submit it. it. I think she'll get in. That's my big bet. And that she actually wins that category. I would love it if not enough films submit for eight nominees. <laughs> they definitely don't need eight nominees. Uh, I think Taylor and possibly Beyonce will both get in there. And I think Taylor would win. Um, I can see, like, I think Taylor would care about it more than Beyonce. Yeah. So. All right, Joyce. Uh, email us at slugfestandgoldderby.com. We'll be back Monday, I guess, with our recap of the Globes nominations. Wow. What are you going to change between now and then? Honestly, not much. I can't be. <laughs> I'm like, it's fine. I'll probably I mean, just you said that through. based on like NBR today. I guess based on NBR, today. I could or, think like, about LA. Like, LA is announcing on Sunday. I don't know if I would care about what LA says, though I think I'd be interested to see what they think, but from a Globe standpoint. But I would say like the one category I could see moving around is like, like we said, like supporting supporting actress and probably actor for drama i think there's room like we were saying at the bottom i don't know we'll see i hope zach efron wins nbr today that'd be so good what do you think will be like the rachel zegler of uh this year i mean it could be zach efron <laughs> that'd be amazing well what like last Greta year Lee? best best picture they gave to your fave top gun maverick i think they'll give best picture to Oppenheimer. This is so outdated. We already know. If you're watching this, you already know who I am. I'm not even going to do this, so whatever. But uh, who cares? Like, so we're, we're just saying. we're predicting Zach Arfona and Oppenheimer yes. for NBR, which is over. And nothing, I'm not saying anything else. I want to see what they pick. All right. <laughs> Bye, Joyce. See you later.